Hello friends, so I am Dr. Devajyoti Saha. Now, in this lecture, I will be delivering my third lecture series of the seismic processing concept. So, hope you are all doing well. I am with my new lecture after so long time. And before that, I have already delivered my previous lecture on the seismic. So, before going into that, I request you to please uh, go through the my previous two lectures of the first and second series so that you can get the understanding of all the terms and what is the main processing steps so in my lecture i will be talking about today the deconvolution aspect the seismic data processing the amplitude and the phase spectra the velocity concept and i will show you finally some seismic section one practical seismic section case study uh, to you so let's move on and it's very important for upcoming geoscientist examination the combined geoscientist examination this type of topics and the questions are common and for people from physics background they should follow all the things i mean the deconvolution the mathematical operation to get more marks in that exam okay and also the geophysics people also they should know all the things the basic uh, from the basic so that they can understand all the things thing is our time frequency domain example the Fourier transformation it's a very common thing hope you learn us from time space to the frequency space ft to f omega there is a this is the transformation so you can easily uh, return to the time space and so there are these two functions and there is a time and the frequency domain the corresponding time domain operation these are the frequency domain shapes so there are some common very examples of signal along with the Fourier transformation that is the cosine wave uh, the sync function the corresponding is the box function in the Fourier transformation the Gaussian curve and the double exponential which will convert into a Lorentzian for the Fourier space okay so this I have already described in my last lecture so let's go <laughs> this is a very important relation between the Fourier transformation and the convolution it's a part of digital filtering if you have to function ft and gt the corresponding transformation the Fourier space is the f omega g omega and the convolution can be denoted by this operation and the corresponding i mean in the frequency domain you can express this as the multiplication of the uh, amplitude spectra of the correspond dash to function in the frequency space and adding the phase spectra so uh, what is the importance if you go to the frequency spectra you can get computationally less time and very efficient steps so generally we will do all the processes in the frequency spectra rather than converting into the time space so this is the importance of this uh, theorem of uh, Fourier transformation and the convolution now talking about our marine seismic reflection survey so there is a ship is going there is a source and there are some receivers the reflections are recorded in the first five receivers and there are five bounce point telling interface 3 1 2 3 4 5 corresponding to direct reflection we, we get a straight line these waves and the traces these are called traces and the reflection phenomena is generally described by a hyperbolic event the mathematical description i have already provided in my previous lecture now what is our goal for the digital seismic processing to improve most of the things we need to know if we acquire data the data must be converted into an image that we can infer about the subsurface structure so to do that you need to know some information about the signal that is amplitude frequency wavelength phase and there is also but and you need to improve the noise and the signal this s by n ratio you need to increase the resolution and when you do that there is one case you have to broaden the frequency spectrum so that more you can get the information and you can easily process the seismic section so poor s by n ratio can arise from the scattering and the absorption which can provide resistance for a seismic processing so if you have a seismic source it generates a p waves in the water that propagates the water and it penetrates in the seabed and is reflected by the interfaces so and we need to know the information about the interfaces so what are the sources so chemical explosives piezoelectric effects sparkers boomers air gun and the water gun so what are 
the they are corresponding to the sources we are getting minimum phase the maximum phase the mixed phase and the zero phase wavelets so you need to know very detail about these phases which is very important for the exam and you know and easily you can easily visualize with the time that the amplitude get diminished this is a minimum phase and it's a opposite case for the maximum phase for the mixed phase it is in simultaneously increasing and the decreasing for the zero phase at a con particular point t is equal to zero there is a symmetrical wavelet and amplitude spectra is same for the all uh, phases wavelet but that there is a different of phase spectra for the maximum mixed phase zero phase and the minimum phase now whenever we are process we, are, we get any raw signal the signal is contaminated by the noise so there are coherent noise there is a random noise Gen generally the terms ground roll back scatter multiples this term i have described earlier but this i will be describing in uh, my in this lecture the ground roll and back scatter how it appears in a seismic case and you can reduct it by i mean you can get the reduction by velocity filtering fk filtering nmo correction this already i have described previously the multi channel filtration and for random noise you can eliminate by the deconvolution and the cmp stacking so let me another describe it by cdp stack you know we are getting one reflection event that is primary event and is a multiple event our objective is to eliminate the multiple event from the primary event so when we do nmo correction that reflect events are aligned in the straight line and when you stack it you get a single trace for primary and you have you can easily out of phase multiple you can easily the uh, multiple you do stacking the multiple is diminished and in a stack section you get primary events and a very feeble part of the multiple that our objective is to completely eliminate it from our seismic section so it is one of the method to eliminate the multiple so the seismic data processing there are data reduction data resampling data editing and ctp gather so this is a very important thing is velocity analysis that result from the nmo correction and there is a deconvolution operation that i will be describing very detail in my this lecture multiple attenuation already i have elaborated stacking of stresses then there is a very advanced technical migration and there is a stacking after migration this is a velocity filtering its objective is to remove coherent noise events so for a particular short gather event there is a reflected event this is called the reflected event along with the surface propagating seismic event this is a two dimensional filtering transformation of seismic data from tx domain to the frequency domain so the time domain to frequency domain conversion is very important for any seismic cases so this is the frequency domain in this domain you are getting at the ground roll this is the noise and the back scattered noise and the high velocity noise so our objective is to eliminate back scatter high velocity and the ground roll noise and get only the seismic reflected events that is generally carried out by velocity filtering by this wedge shape by drawing a polygon and eliminate outside the polygon of this back scatter and the ground roll noise now in a typically seismic events there are direct arrival there is a reflection events and there is a ground roll also there means there's a noise your objective is to find only the reflection apart from the noise of multiple and the ground roll there is a back there is also one problem Sys generally seismic wave decays as a function of time amplitude so to uh, compensate for this event you have to apply a recovery at the gain function so that you can get same amount of energy is reaching at each layer of the subsurface to get the complete full information of the subsurface and you are getting this decay curve corresponding to that and recovery function you have to apply for and for the part and for to get the more precise event to get the mean amplitude spectrum we have to apply a bandpass filter filtering between a certain frequency range so if we apply a bandpass filter in that region of reflected events we getting the signal in this region and outside this we get noise so noise is the two region generally for seismic uh, reflected events the bandpass filter the frequency is limited between 8 10 to 100 hertz not more than that and not below the 8 hertz so below that 8 to 10 to below hertz that is the noise and also 100 hertz that is based on up, upon our objectives the bandpass filter is applied okay 
now this is the convolution model for the recorded seismogram generally a seismic trace is the convolution between the input wavelet and the reflectivity series and generally in any seismic event the reflectivity the, our objective is to know the reflectivity series from geological perspective okay so now we move to our most important topics of deconvolution generally the seismic many components of the noise lies within the frequency spectrum and we cannot remove it by the frequency filtering because it can only improve as by in ratio i mean but it damages the vertical resolution we have to increase resolution that can be done by this method of inverse filtering or the deconvolution our objective is to know the reflectivity series that i am repeatedly telling but we know only the resultant seismic trace not the input wavelet so to know about the input wavelet the predictive deconvolution is generally carried out which generally remove the multiples it predicts the arrival times of the waves from the knowledge of the arrival times of the relevant primary events and our required deconvolution operation is the filter inverse filter which you can define it by the cross correlation of the output with the known input signal hope you know about the cross correlation in my last lecture i have talked in detail about the cross correlation operation deconvolution predictive deconvolution operation the amplitude typical amplitude versus frequency before applying deconvolution and it is a inverse operator that is a deconvolution operator our objective is to get the amplitude broaden amplitude spectrum at all the frequencies limited within the frequency range now to do this we have to carry out autocorrelation operation and whenever you do autocorrelation you get the autocorrelated wave this like in this way in which you are having three parameters that is the one operator length and one other is prediction distance and the design window so this is the prediction distance is generally defined from zero to the second zero i mean from starting to the second zero crossing so after the deconvolution operation you get the required autocorrelation as the first part of the wave that i have i am i described it in my previous seismic lecture series to at my last slide you can uh, you can follow it and you can get this is the same thing i am i am talking so the thing is that our objective is to get the broaden ampli i mean amplitude spectrum after applying the deconvolution operation there are two types of deconvolution filter one is spiking and another is predictive so predictive um, just preserves the wavelet shape and it uh, it is usually is, is usually just used to suppress the short period multiple whereas the spiking is the generally whitening deconvolution operator it produces an output the amplitude spectra of the output contains all the frequency at the same amplitude means it is generally at the spike it produces spike generally water bottom multiples are very big problem in the marine seismic data processing and deconvolution improves the temporal resolution of the seismic wavelet and it suppresses the water bottom multiples very easy. now talking about the water bottom multiples de reverberation there is another problem that is a ringing which is called the multiple reflection in a water layer that is generally removed by removing the short path multiples and uh, how you remove it you remove by shortening the pulse length by doing carrying out the predictive deconvolution operation on the seismic section and you increase the vertical resolution and uh, eliminate the ringing effect by this so generally uh, uh, predictive deconvolution is usually applied to eliminate the short path multiples and improve the vertical resolution whereas the effect of whitening is the spiking deconvolution is also important it equalizes the amplitude of the all frequency component within the recorded frequency band now whatever i was talking about is pictorially you can see that is the deconvolution operation broaden the amplitude spectrum and simultaneously it shorten the pulse length your required pulse length is uh, limited within that so in a typical example it is before deconvolution it's after deconvolution so before deconvolution you can see the amplitude spectra this already uh, described but from the this time series data you can see it removes the ringy character of the reflection in the stack section which is evident is it's generally evident for the strong reflection in the previous case but after deconvolution it is somehow uh, removed so 
I was repeatedly talking about the very important part of the any seismic data processing that is called the velocity analysis, which is which yields the best alignment of the non-zero offset travel time to its zero offset travel time. Generally, we use interpret the stacking NMO velocities, which is based on the hyperbolic assumption and the stacking of traces by a common midpoint gather. The very important parameter is one of this is called semblance, which is the measurement of the simulator one trace to the next. And it represents the hyperbolic trajectory and it displays the stress as a function of time and velocity. You know, see that this is following the hyperbolic trajectory with the gathering of the semblance. And in the right panel, it is the dynamic stack. So it is generally, it is, uh, I mean, carried out in a size space 2D software. So it is a dynamic stack corresponding to that. Um, velocity analysis semblance spot. So these things are all the gathers are flat, almost flat. So this flat gather represents the NMO corrected data. And from the NMO correction, we can get the, we can pick up the best value. Like that, this is the NMO corrected correctly flat data. This is a dynamic stack panel. And we, we, we uh, I mean, we plot the velocity uh, at the different horizon at a particular CDP. I mean, at a, uh, so, and to get the, to get the more complex geological subsurface structures by this velocity analysis. And keep in mind, this step has to be carried out in a very, very meticulous way to get the best possible result. So now coming to my the end of the lecture, I will show after this is almost some basic processing is applied there, not the uh, advanced migration, not the processing. And you have to do velocity analysis after deconvolution, before deconvolution and all the stresses. So this is a preliminary brute stack seismic section. You can get the resolution is not too far good. And one of the seismic sections for uh, with the CDP gather. One of the processed interpreted seismic section, you can see, you can have a glance with, with the CDP stack section and horse, grabbins, this is geological structures are there. I will describe the structures in my uh, in the next lecture. So you can see easily the subsurface nature of within in a zone of the, the deep sea level has been delineated by the seismic reflection survey to a CDP gather interpreted. So the, our objective, final objective is to after applying all the CDP gather, NMO correction, velocity analysis, uh, elimination of multiples, all things and of course last migration we can get or we can we can conclude to a final seismic section which will be in this way i hope you have uh, understood my lecture if any problem is there please don't hesitate to contact me please share like and turn on the bell notification icon and be with me always to get more updates so and this is my lecture, uh, this is to get the more updates for physics and geophysics learning.